Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back. It's your boy Skylar, and today we got some more Larry Bird content with the day Larry Bird showed Michael Jordan, who was the boss. People have been saying sometimes, not all the time, but people have been saying Larry Bird was the guy to stop Michael Jordan. Like the Celtics, I think, if I'm not mistaken, knocked the Bulls out the first round, I think multiple times. But yeah, anyways, we're going to check it out. I hope you guys enjoy. As always, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, join the fam, and yeah, let's get it. Bro, Bird was an animal. <laughs> a different being breed. Being on the throne is not just about being the king. It's about being the rival to beat. And you also got to be willing to prove your superiority to any opponent who aspires to kingship. And that was exactly the situation for Larry Bird in 1986. I'd much rather guard Michael Jordan than Larry Bird because you have to play the game as a thinker when you're playing him. The Celtics forward was not only coming off one of the most successful individual seasons in league history, winning his third consecutive regular season MVP and hoisting the Larry O'Brien. Limited to comments, is Larry Bird one of the most like all around player to ever play basketball along with like LeBron or whatever? Let me know in the comments because Larry Bird he can shoot I know back then they didn't really have a three-point line like that so imagine if he had to like practice like how now today's game is like superly like it's heavily on the three-point line imagine if he had that bag back in the day oh my god bro Brian while his passing is nuts his trash talking is second to none it's like bro <laughs> earning his second finals MVP. I'm really proud to, to receive this award for the third time. Bird was changing the game. The whole conception. That was a quick flex for the third time. Proud to, to receive this award for the third time. Bird was changing the game. The whole conception of the small forward was different after his time in the NBA. But just when he looked like he was the undisputed king, a new lion was coming to the pride. Mm -hmm. Young Michael Jordan came into the league making a difference right from the start. And from the very first moment, he made it clear to Larry that he wasn't afraid of him at all. The Celtics were still the better team, but MJ put on one of the greatest performances in playoff history against Boston in 1986, ooh, ooh. making a statement about who was the better player Them on the handles, though. And from then on, the rivalry burned hotter than ever. See, Larry Bird had a mission. For his entire career, he had been the undisputed best player in the NBA. But now, a 23-year-old kid who was averaging 37 points per game was... Thirty-seven? But you don't average thirty-seven points per game. Oh my God, bro. Oh my. And the thing is, this is why I keep telling people like you can't compare eras because you can't average thirty-seven points nowadays. I don't think you can, bro. Like the NBA is way too inconsistent for someone to average that high. And the only way for someone to average that high if they're like hitting like twenty-eight points per game and like every other like you know, every once in a while, maybe like once every two weeks, you have like a big game, like a forty, fifty point game. Something like that might, you know, takes the average up there, but thirty-seven, god damn. Was challenging him for the reign of the king of world basketball. The bird had already proved it all. His legacy was unmatched, but his honor was in jeopardy. And that was something that he wouldn't allow. The reason was simple. Bird was bidding to become the GOAT of basketball. The forward mm. had been breaking every barrier in existence since arriving to the NBA. In 1979, Bird signed a contract with the Celtics to become the highest paid rookie in league history at $650,000 per year. That's a lot for back then. That's a lot of money, bro. People, you might be like, oh, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> as soon as he arrived in the NBA, Larry wreaked havoc. He finished fourth in the MVP race during his rookie year. During the next three seasons, not only did he win the NBA ring for the first time in 1981, but he also finished second in the MVP race three oh, really? times. And his averages during this stint? 22.6 points, 10.9 rebounds, and 5.7 assists per game. Oh, but I thought he averaged a triple-double. I'm about to say, wait, hold up, Larry Bird. <laughs> Something happened during the summer of 1983. Bird went from being the second best player in the league to a completely legendary player and absolutely superior to his eternal rival, Magic Johnson. Thus mm. began his incredible three-year stint in which he became one of the greatest Ooh. players of all time. From 1983 to 1986, Bird achieved three NBA MVPs. After winning the 1984 championship and being for the first time in his career MVP of the finals, Bird ascended in the NBA Olympus and wrote his name in the history books forever. 
During those three seasons, Larry averaged 26.2 points, 10.1 okay. rebounds, and 6.7 assists per game. Not Ryan bad. Continuing to be an elite defender, by the way. This was his status just prior to the start of the 1986 playoffs. A versatile forward who was capable of doing everything on the court. And in fact, like, you might be like, oh, 22 points, this and that. Listen, he also averaged 10, 10 assists a game, bro. That's dip. Like, what? There had never been. Was it, was it 10 assists or was it, was it like rebounds? By the way, this was his status per game. While okay, so six assists almost. Yeah, so that's still continuing to be that's an elite bad. defender, by the way. This was his status just prior to the start of the 1986 playoffs. A versatile forward who was capable of doing everything on the court. There had never been a big man who had the skills of a perimeter player in traditional basketball until he came along. And not just because of his iconic three shot, becoming one of the first small forwards mm -mm -mm. that played the power forward position to be able to stretch the floor. His incredible passing ability allowed him to become a Ooh, true nice. leader for those Celtics, both on offense and defense. But in order to win his third ring in 1986, he first had to get past a team with a major stud that was starting to make some noise. And just less than a full year later, it was March 27th, 1987. Okay. The Celtics, with a record of 51 wins and 19 losses, were coming off a back-to-back -to, -back to face a Bulls team with a record of 35 wins and 35 losses. That, by the way, was also 50? coming off a game the night before. I said 50. I mean, like the 500. Bird was having a pretty good season with averages of 28 points, 9 Ooh. rebounds, and almost 8 assists per game that allowed him to finish third in the MVP race. While Jordan, who would end up finishing second, was averaging an absurd 37 points per game. The How you finish second in an MVP race and you're averaging 37 points? Who is number one? Who is number one if you're averaging 37 points, right, and you're still number two? Who is number one? What is he averaging? 40 points, 10 rebounds, and like four assists or some shit? Like, what? Celtics came out with an unusual starting five due to the absence of Dennis Johnson, who was replaced by Jerry Sitching. And playing away from home, they knew it would be a tough game. But right from the first plays of the game, Bird showed what kind of night he was going to have. His off-ball mm. movement was elite, basically, because of his enormous basketball IQ, his fakes. I mean, this oh, was one of the most that. dangerous men in basketball without the ball in his hands. That coupled with the gravity he generated from his mid-range and long-range shooting was lethal. Plus, he was a typical player who was blessed by the divine touch, okay? But once again, his art... In today's NBA, that shot would have been out of bounds because it touched the top of the backboard. Personal from the low post was unpredictable. It's easy to find samples of his off-ball ability and gravity as it was often his easiest way to score. But on this day, his mid-range shot was Ooh. touched by a magic wand. He just couldn't miss. Net. And he was able to abuse it again and again and again. Meanwhile, Jordan began to realize the enormous attention he was getting from the Celtics' defense, which every time he attempted a drive sent multiple bodies to stop him. But far from getting advantages mm -mm -mm. only without the ball in his hands, Larry was also able to score in isos from the low post, a move that decades later, Mavs legend Dirk Nowinski patented and made his own. So the bro, Dirk Nowinski, bro, you can never block his shot. His, that knee, that fadeaway, bro. <laughs> Bulls realized they had no choice oh but to God. do what the Celtics did with Jordan, a virtually continuous two-on-one when he had the ball in his hands. So Bird basically said, you know what? I'm going to hurt them in transition. Thus came the end of the first quarter in which somehow the Bulls managed to stay close on the scoreboard, trailing by only one point, 36 okay, to 35. Not bad. Bird had a spectacular first quarter in scoring, 20 points, nothing more, nothing less. So he began to take advantage of that extra attention to test his versatility. He was able to transform garbage into gold. Damn. Case in point, this loose ball, which he turns into a great assist. And if there's one thing you don't want, it's for the guy who's destroying you from mid-range to start showing his signs of his playmaking though. ability. Bird was unleashed, and players like Kevin McHale appreciated. Even when they didn't count, Larry's passes were simply spectacular. No, he really didn't even need to score to be the most impactful player in the game. And, some and that's the most dangerous players to play against. If they don't even need to score to be dangerous, that's a dangerous player to play against. I'm telling you. In some cases, MJ had to defend the Celtic star too. 
and the size difference played a key role in these situations. But knowing that the half-court offense was very difficult with two defenders on top of him, mm -hmm. Bird continued to make use of scoring in transition. And what was more shocking, a player of his size dropping threes like it's nothing. But incredibly, oh. mm. despite Bird's 33 points in the first half, the Bulls managed <laughs> to go into halftime trailing by only three points. Thanks in part to the 16 points MJ had scored during the first two quarters, of course. When the third quarter began, Larry kind of relaxed offensively. He decided to use his gravity to try to find better options for his teammates, as he knew he would need one more offensive threat to take the game easily. And stepping up on defense, the Celtics got stops on Jordan that allowed them to get easy baskets on the other end of the court. But Bird continued his playmaker role for most of the rest of the game as he led his team on defense with actions like this one. He was certainly a player who had no problem getting his hands dirty either. But when- Bro, Larry Bird was putting out work on Jordan. I ain't gonna even cap. Larry attempted a <laughs> shot during the second half. It was to score. And he kept sending occasional reminders to the Bulls defense. Reminders that one player was not gonna be enough to guard him. In Talking front of the trash. United Center packed with more than 18,000 fans, Damn. the forward was having a legendary game. The Celtics allowed just 22 points in the third quarter, by the way, and managed to head into the final quarter with a nine-point lead. And after resting for a couple of minutes, Larry continued to do whatever his team needed to do to get the win. These Celtics were good. I mean, like, really good. Bird was that piece of the puzzle that served as a wild card, too. That player you could put in any role, in any part of the court, in any situation. Bro, I wish today's NBA had, like, a, like a dirt. Not like a dirt. <laughs> what am I talking about? Like a bird. And I'm not talking about a joker or whatever. Like, he's cool to watch, but it's like, he's not really athletic. He don't dunk. He don't ever leave the, f the ground. He, like, he tippy toe and, like, lay it in or, like, I like a little soft, barely left the ground type stuff. But, like, Larry Bird, like, the creativity with the pass behind the back, underneath the legs. Like, I would love to, like, watch that in today's NBA and who was going to be able to generate advantages on his own. And during the last quarter, the tone did not change. Bird continued to abuse from long distance as he had been doing all game. He continued mm. to play the simplest yet most dominant basketball anyone had ever seen. But one of the virtues of genius is to make what seems complicated really easy, you know? And despite the Bulls' final scare, who managed to cut the deficit from 11 points to four, the Celtics defense stepped up to close the game. Bird did it. Months after MJ scored 63, Crazy. the forward only had to play 100% for one half to show him Damn. that if he wanted to, he could do it too. 33 points in the first half, 41 in the game. That went down in history as one of the greatest displays of ego any player in the league Damn. could perform. The difference is that Larry's ego also made his teammates better. Weeks later, the Celtics met the Bulls again in the first round of the playoffs. And the result was the same as last year. Boston managed to advance by a score of three wins to zero. Yeah, so 6-0 and in playoff games against Jordan. I, 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 bro, I told y'all, I told y'all, Celtics were giving the Bulls that work. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> That's the record that is stuck in history. When they met, Larry's Celtics were always better. So good that not even a superhero performance could stop them. And so Larry Bird, along with the Pistons of Isaiah Thomas and Bill Lambeer, became the thorn in MJ's side that he really... And this is why I hate when people say, oh, Jordan was unstoppable. What are you talking about? He did not... He played, what, 15, 15 seasons, 15 years in the NBA, and he won six? Obviously, he'll stop a few times. Like, come on, bro, like... I hate when his fans and fans just be capping just a cap. He could never get rid of. Bird did not win the ring that season. Magic Johnson's Lakers did. The other side of the three-headed monster that dominated basketball worldwide. Mm. But even if he didn't win the championship, Larry did world basketball a favor. He taught Jordan that he still had a long way to reach his full potential. He taught him that scoring isn't always enough and that he needed to become True. a leader capable of bringing out the best in his teammates. And without the lesson that the greatest player in Boston Celtics history, with Bill Russell's permission, taught MJ, it is likely that basketball history would have been completely different. And Jordan and Bird's rivalry continued to cause a stir in the league, but they never met again in the playoffs. 
Larry would go on to post a 17 and 11 record. Yeah, yeah, Jordan, you're lucky. You're lucky. You're lucky. Because if he had continued to meet Larry Bird in the playoffs, he wouldn't have six rings. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's like equivalent to the Joker and LeBron. LeBron can't stop Joker for nothing. Jordan can't stop Larry Bird for nothing. So record against Michael's Bulls during his career until a serious heel injury followed by back uh. problems greatly shortened his career. Injuries that not only brought about the end of the Boston Celtics dynasty, but also sent them into a sinkhole from which they could not climb out of until 20 years later. And we all know that history is written by the winners, and very few people have won more than Jordan. And Larry Bird has kind of gone down in history as underrated compared to Jordan. But he Facts, was a forward man. who changed the traditional definition of basketball and who starred in one of the most competitive eras ever. And let's not forget that from 1983 to 1986, Ooh. there was not a single player on the planet able to face him. No one. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought down in the comments and we'll see. Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, join the fam. Man, I'm trying to get this content going. I'm trying to like provide entertainment for y'all. So let me know in the comments what y'all want me to react to when I got you. I hope you have a blessed day, and I'll see you for the next one.